There's a lot of confusion around testing memory faults on NVIDIA graphic cards. A lot of questions like, what system do I use? What Linux version do I use? What commands do I run? How do I know the correct faulty memory? In this video, I aim to address these questions and a lot more. In today's video, I have three test subjects, an RTX 5070, an RTX 5080, and an RTX 5090. A bit of background on these GPUs. All three are victims of shipping. These GPUs were damaged during shipping as they were installed inside the PC. Gravity took care of the rest and now they are here hoping to be revived again. And no, they are not from the same person. Today's video is not going to be about repairing these cards, but how to identify the fault. A commonly known damage that occurs with GPUs where shipping is involved is memory related or a cracked PCB. Luckily, none of these GPUs had a cracked PCB. The worst one out of this bunch is this RTX 5090. The cooler is completely racked. Parts of the cooler are completely broken. I tried to straighten out the backplate as much as I could, but this is all I could do. This cooler is not usable and it's bent in several places. I would be surprised if I didn't find broken pads under the memory and the core. A common thing in these GPUs is that they all use GDDR7. These GPUs, when installed in any computer, only produce a black screen and the computer does not boot. So, what do you need to find the faulty memory? Let me show you what I'm using. I have an Intel i7 running on a Z170 motherboard with 16 GB of RAM. Powering this is a 1550 watts thermal take power supply. The first step when testing any GPU with GDDR6X or GDDR7 is to switch to the internal display. To do this, you need to go to the BIOS of the motherboard and set things up. First, in the BIOS, make sure that the legacy boot is enabled in CSM support, as the USB that we'll be using is a legacy version. Next, you have to switch the display from Auto or PCIe to iGPU, which is the internal display from the CPU. If your CPU does not have an iGPU, then you'll need another graphics card to run as primary, which complicates things a bit. Let's start with the RTX 5070 first. Plug in your legacy USB with the memory testing software in it, and then install the RTX 5070 on the bench. Wait for the grub menu to load up on the screen. On my USB, I have the testing software installed for the 30 series and later, which is Tiny Linux 18. To start the testing process, I will first check if the GPU is detected. To do that, the command is LSPCI. What it does is it lists all the devices connected to the PCIe bus of the motherboard. After I know that the GPU is detected, I will move to the directory which in this case is 570.215 underscore 5070. Once I'm in, I will run the mods command displayed on the screen below. For GDDR6X and GDDR7, mods is all you need to identify the faulty memory. Mods will do its thing and write the results into a log file. To identify the faulty memory, we have to read the codes that it has just displayed. Let's open the log file that this test is saved in and that's mods.log. To open the file, run the command nano space mods.log after the test is completed. This will open the file on the screen. Now keep scrolling down till you see nv underscore pfp underscore fppa underscore training underscore cmd i know this is getting complicated but trust me it's not below this it will list the data for each memory channel channel a b c etc one below the other like you see here fbpa underscore zero is channel a 
FBPA underscore one is channel B and so on. Next to the training status, it has a code. In this code, the last digit or alphabet is what matters. If the last digit is two, then the faulty memory is bank zero on that channel. If you see eight, then the faulty memory is bank one on that channel. But if you see an alphabet A, then both banks on that channel are faulty. From the log file of the test results for this RTX 5070, I can identify that bank 0 and channel A is faulty. Probably broken pads under the memory module A0 or under the core that connects to this memory module. Now let's run the memory test on the RTX 5080 and see what we can find. The procedure is the same. Install the GPU on the bench and then boot through the internal display. Boot to Linux, check if the GPU is detected and move to the folder that has the software. In this case, 570.215 underscore 5080. Again, mods is all you need to find the faults at this point. So I will display the command on the screen for you. Just like before, it will run the test and save the result in the log file. Let's take a look at the log file. The command to open the file is nano space mods.log. Let's scroll down where it says nv underscore pfb underscore fbpa underscore training underscore command and take a look at the results. Now on this RTX 5080, our faulty memory is A0 and B1. Again, how do I know that? FBPA underscore zero is channel A and FBPA underscore one is channel B. The last digit on the code for FBPA underscore zero is two, so A0. And the last digit on FBPA underscore one is eight, so B1. It can be intimidating at times, but as you start to read this data time and time again, you will start to see the clouds clear. Let's look at the RTX 5090 now and let's find out what it has in store for us. This one has a completely broken cooler, but luckily the PCB is not cracked, so we can still run our tests. The procedure is the same as others. Install it on the test bench and boot into Linux. Check if the GPU is detected, but this time I will switch to the 5090 folder to run our tests. The command is again the same mods command I will display on the screen for you to make a note of. To read the results, I will run the command nano space mods.log. Now the 5090 has 16 memory slots, so that translates to 8 memory channels and 16 banks. That's channel A to channel H. If we take a look at the report, we can see that channel A bank 1, that's A1, is faulty and the entire channel H, that's H0 and H1 both, as the last alphabet is A and that indicates both banks. This software tells you where the fault is, but it will not tell you if the cause is broken pads under the memory module or under the GPU core that connects these memory module. That we will know once the memory module and the core are lifted. You don't have to be a repair technician to run tests like these to identify which memory is faulty. Anyone who knows how to use a computer can run these tests. But to repair the faulty memory we identified, we need to be a skilled technician with a lot of practice. At this point, a lot of you must be thinking, where can I get this memory testing software? This software is not available in any search. You can join the Discord server of Richard, that's Learn Electronics Repair, or Tony, Northwest Repair, and get it for free and create your own testing tool like the one I used in this video. Or you can buy a ready-to-use cloned version of my testing USB so you don't have to go through the hassle of cleaning the errors. I have taken care of all the hiccups present in the ones I acquired and put them together on a 16 GB USB stick. To buy the USB testing tool I created, head over to my website and place your order. If your country is not listed in the shipping list, just drop me an email and I will add it for you. 
what you will receive is a 16 GB USB stick with a memory testing software for all GPUs from GTX series right up to the RTX 5090. You will also receive a list of commands that can be used to test memory on NVIDIA GPUs. These are freely available tools cleaned of errors and bundled in a plug and play environment. So you're paying for the build, organization and documentation. If you like the content I create, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I release another video. You can support this channel by becoming a member or using the thanks button as a one-time option. Your contribution helps. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Cheers.